busting through it, and I'm glad about it. So, hey, let me tell you some old gift thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. It's a good thing the Bible says to give thanks unto God. It's a mighty good thing to praise his name. So guess what? Where there are two or three gathered in the name, he said, there I will be in the midst of them. So God is in the midst, and I thank him. I thank him. I thank him. I thank him. What another day that God has given to us, and I'm glad about it. Amen. So let us, let us open in prayer before we shall go live. God, our Father, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, God that you love us enough that you allowed us to be here to praise you, to glorify your name. And God, as we prepare now to go into this worship experience, those of us, God, that are here, we came with a spirit of adoration and praise in our spirit to lift and glorify you. And God, there will be some that will be listening, God, that we don't know how they're feeling. We don't know, God, what they're going through. But God, we know that you know. So allow the service, God, to be a blessing to those who couldn't wait to Sunday morning just to tune in to hear what the word of God has to say to them on this day. God, meet them where they are. Let your spirit do what it does. Move us out of our own way that the people may see you. They may feel you. They may know you and connect to you right where they are. For we are in a time, God, where we are having to reach beyond the walls. And we know, God, that you are beyond the walls. So reach them where they are. Hear our prayer. In Jesus' name. Amen. Y'all give God a glory praise. Y'all give God a glory praise. Because post it wasn't but us left. So what would we do but magnify and glory? Post we had to stay here all night and all day and couldn't make it on the outside. And this is the only place we could find ourselves is in the house of the Lord with just a few of God's people. We want to give God praise, glory, and honor for every moment he gives us to magnify and to glorify his name. I thank God.
sing it. Sing it. Sing it. softly. We greet you in the name of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ for this is the day that the Lord has made. Hallelujah. And I'll say it again that this is the day that the Lord has made. So wherever you are if you can lift your hands and you can say without a shadow of a doubt that this is the day that the Lord has made. That, that he woke us up early this morning. It was a new day. And thank God, as we said on last Sunday, he stopped by my bedside and he dropped off some mercies for me today. So this is the day that the Lord has made. And we are going to choose to rejoice and be glad. And anybody in their homes are choosing to rejoice and to be glad in, in spite of how it might look, in spite of how you may feel, in spite of what may be going on around you. There may be some uncertainties in your home. There may be some uncertainties on your job, but it matters not where you are, but when you really begin to think about it, it becomes my choice to rejoice. Anybody want to give God of glory praise where you are? Because when I think about how good God is, and what he did for me, what he did not have to do because I have not been all of what I should be, but I thank God I'm not what I used to be. And he looked beyond every fault of mine. I just, I just need to know if there's somebody that's glad to be in the number just one more time because everybody don't get the opportunity today. Oh, no, I came with a praise in my spirit because I may be weak in my body, but I thank God and I'm strong in my spirit. Because when I think about how good and great it is for brethren to come and dwell together in unity, what a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. I'm trying to get some energy where you are. You may be a little low in your home, but thank God that he lifts us. We are in still the season of giving thanks to who God is. Yeah, the scripture tell us to all give thanks unto the Lord, for the Lord is good. That's enough just to shout about. That's enough just to go home on. That's enough just I look back over my life and realize it's a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord. It's a good thing, the Bible says. Uh, I'm, 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 I just don't know. I just, there's a weight that, that we're feeling in, even in Zion, that there's a weight that we're feeling. But thank God that he's a weight bearer. 
he's a heavy load carrier. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, it might not be all of what we designed it to be, but I thank God that he is with, he's bearing the weight, he's bearing the weight. He's, he's a bearer, he's a weight bearer. He's a weight bearer. I just, he's a weight, he's a weight bearer. Just think about what he's brought you through this week when you look back in retrospect of where God has brought you from. He said, yeah, now, so he said, he said, I was glad when they said unto me to let us go into the house of the Lord. So we welcome you into the house of the Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your house is his house. This house is his house. Every house is his house. So he said, I was glad when they said unto me to let us go into the house of the Lord the house. We give honor to God our Father. And we thank him today. Just had just, just a praise break. Just somebody needed a praise break for a moment. Before we before, before we go, before we go, we time we get the punch in much into the rush. But it's a good thing. Give thanks to the Lord. So, God, we thank you. We thank you. Because, God, you are good. And you're worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. I hope that everybody is feeling well where you are we thank God for keeping you during this season God is a keeper he's a promise keeper <laughs> yeah yeah I can I can almost just go on in it but he's a promise keeper thank God Amen. But just for a moment, just for a moment, we, we're going to move. We're going to move. God has got a word that uh, he's, he's planted into our spirit today. Ah, oh, boy. There's, there's not much in announcement this morning, but to, just to tell you that God is good. <laughs> That's enough already by itself. He ain't, 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 ain't got a whole bunch of announcements that we got to make today because we just wanted to let somebody know that God is good. Yeah, put that on and say, hey, look at here. That's the announcement for the day. <laughs> is that God is good. And not only is he good, he will be good. Thank God. Amen. Amen. So we're going to ask now that our chairman of deacons will come with our scripture. Yeah, yeah. We ask Minister Boyd to come and give us our prayer. And then we're going to get another song. And then we're going to lift the word of God. Is that all right? Can we do it like that today? Ah, we bless the Lord at all times. Amen. Thank you, Brother Chairman. We give God praise. We give God praise. scripture will be taken from Romans the 8th chapter. I ask that you bear with me that God put this in my spirit. Starting with the first verse. And it reads thus, it says, There is therefore no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life 
in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Yes, sir. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sent his only son in the likeness of sinful flesh. For sin condemned in the flesh that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. Excuse me. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit the things of the spirit. For to be carnal minded is death, but to be spiritual minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enemy against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwells in you. Now if any man has not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal body by his spirit that dwells in you. Thus I read excuse me, Romans, the eighth chapter, verses 1 through 11. May the Lord have a blessing upon his holy word. Thank you, Lord. Good morning to those that's already present. Good morning to those that are listening. Glad to be in the number. One more time. Father God, you know it seems like we're going through the fire. It may seem like we're already in the flood. Sometimes we feel like we are broken in pieces and left all alone. But through it all, Father, through it all, through it all you kept us. Through it all, you made us. And we still got a praise inside of us. For Zion got a praise inside of us. For we say, thank you, Lord. Thank you for your grace. And thank you for your mercies. Your mercies become new every morning. And for that I say thank you, Lord. You pressed, we pressed our way here. It is not about the numbers. It's where your heart is. And right now my heart and my heart is filled. My heart is in the glory of the Lord right about now. And for that I say thank you, Lord. Keep those safe wherever they may be right now. Whatever they're going through, help our nation, Father God. Those who you chose to put in charge, give them the strength and the courage. Let them see through your eyes, Father. Let them walk with you. Let them talk with you. Let them fight your battle, their battle, on their bended knees so we can see. Lift us up, Father God. Lift this nation up. Bring us unto your mercies. Bring us unto your grace. Father God, every member of Zion Pilgrim, you know what they're going through. Some, oh, thank you, Jesus. Some, some, some just lost someone. The bereavement hour. But you're there. You're right there by my side of side. Lift them up. Those that are sick, shut in. No, I, you know what the case might be. Lift them up. Hold them up. Hold them together. Yeah. Divided, we cannot stand. Yeah. But when we stick together yeah. under the mighty name of Jesus, we can conquer the whole world. For that I say thank you, Lord. I pray for the children, the grandchildren. Oh, Lord, thank you so very much. With all of it, it seems like we are going through the darkness. But right now, 
I see the light on the hill. The light we look, keep you looking up to where all our help come from. But I say thank you, Lord. Now I come here today, Father, expecting to hear a word from you. I want you to touch those people like the sheep that's already in the fold. Give them the strength to stay there. If any goats be in here, our joy of the Lord is our strength. We can lift them up and bring them into the fold. For that I say thank you, Lord. Keep them strong. They are under shepherd what you sent to us. Hold them in the palm of your hand. Reach out and touch so he can bring the word. Open our hearts and open our minds. Let it cut us like a two-edged sword to restore us back to where we need to be. These all other blessings. I ask in the mind and name of Jesus. I don't know about you, but I love calling his name Jesus. Jesus. He's able to keep us from falling. In Jesus' name do I pray. Amen. 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 Amen.
That's for somebody that just really know it. I, I don't have to convince you from what he has done. You already know that by where you are now, he's an awesome God. For when you just really count the number, you know that God is an awesome God.
you can do what no one other can. So strengthen us where we're weak. Hold us where we need to be held. And on every leaning side, God, we ask that you promise as only you can. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. What an awesome God we serve. <laughs> what a mighty God we serve. This week, it's been a, a wait. has been brewing for some time on the body of Christ. A wait. I want to lift a couple of scriptures today just to provide you some, some encouragement today. Because I need some encouragement. I need some encouragement. But look at what couple of verses, a couple of verses I'm going to pin to this topic. I want you to write them down and you can go back and read them at your leisure and the translations of which I'm giving them. But Psalms 49 and 15 in the New English Translation. Uh, and I'll tell you why I chose these in a, in a moment. They said, and it starts out, it says, but God. I just, I just like the way that one started. It said, but God will rescue my life from the powers of Sheol. Certainly, it says in the word of God, he will pull me to safety. Second Samuels. 27 and 17. Write it down. Go back and read it. This one is in the Good News Translation. I'll tell you why I went through these translations in a moment. It says that the Lord reached down from above and took hold of me. He pulled me out of deep waters. Psalms 40 and 2. Also in the Good News Translation, it says he pulled me out of a dangerous pit. Out of the deadly quicksand, he set me safely on a rock and he made me secure. Joshua 1 and 9, the New International Version, says this. It says, this is a reminder to Joshua. It said, have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. <laughs> Wherever you go. Amen. Last one, last one, last one, last one. We're going to pull it together in a minute. Psalm 91 and 14. The New International Version says this. It says, because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him 
I will protect him, for he acknowledged my name. He acknowledged my name. I want to talk about just for a few minutes, just for a few minutes, God is pulling us through. <laughs> God is pulling us through. Where, where, wherever you are, in, in, in your homes, those that are here, it, it, just, just say to the person sitting next to you that God is pulling us through. As I was reflecting this week, this word, because of so much that's going on, the, the, this word pulling launched into my spirit. Pulling. I shared it with Sandra. I said, pulling. You, you ever had a word that just kind of just jumps on you? It just, just, it just, jump, just one word, not, not a multitude of words. Just one word just jumps into your spirit. So I went on this quest to find this word "pulling" in the scriptures, and and there were many translations that I had to read, but I, I wanted to find the word "pull" because of this word "pulling" was in my spirit this week. I began to think about the people here at Zion and Deacon Watts. I was thinking about our community, our church family. And I, I want to say to you that our listening is that I miss the people in Zion. You, if you get nothing else, I miss the people in Zion. So this word pulling was in my spirit. As we are adjusting to our reality in, in this COVID season and what COVID has brought us, pulling. Sacrifices that many have made and are still making. Pulling. The loss that many have experienced and, and are experiencing. The physical adjustments that people are having to adjust to. Mental adjustments that we are having to adjust to. Emotional adjustments that we are having to adjust to. And even spiritual adjustments. But I found myself this week comforted by this word pulling. The word pull means that, uh, that I'm exerting force on someone or something. You know, so as to cause movement towards oneself. Pull. This analogy, let me paint this picture for you on this pulling, 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 pulling. I remember as a young boy growing up in, in the country, in Lynchburg, South Carolina, that... Um, Time to time, every now and then, we would have visitors come to the house. And um, we, we, we lived on a dirt road. We lived on a dirt road. And, and the, the, the driveway that led up to the house was a kind of a long driveway. And the driveway, as you walked up toward the house, the driveway curved around to where mama and daddy would park their cars under the carport. And on a rainy day, just out of nowhere, sometimes people would stop by the house. You know, in the country, people didn't call you before they came. They just came to the house. They, they drove up, honked the horn, and you went out and started greeting, but now you got to call folk before you come over. 
But, but I remember, I remember like it was yesterday that cars would drive up and people would come and every now and then after a big rain, the driveway, the driveway that, that we had that curved around to where the carport was, on the left side there was a grassy area and on the right side there was a grassy area. And every now and then you can watch that when a hard rain came, the grass would be soggy. But you couldn't see it. You had to know it was soggy. But every now and then, here comes a visitor. And because they wanted to stay a while, they didn't, they didn't know the land as well as those who resided on the land. And they would pull off to the side and park the car. And then they'll get out, go in the house. And talk with mama and daddy for a little while. And then after the conversation was over, they go to the car. They get inside of the vehicle. And the weight of the car, because it was on soggy ground, <laughs> which they didn't anticipate when they got there, <laughs> they put it, the car in drive. And back then, they had rear-wheel drive. They didn't have a whole lot of front-wheel drive cars. They were all rear-wheel drives. And anybody that know anything about a rear-wheel drive, the rear wheels spin. <laughs> so they put it in gear, accelerate the gas. Then the wheels start spinning. Spinning and spinning and spinning. The, the more gas they gave, the harder it spin. And then after a while, they find themselves in what they call a bog. And they were bogged down. So then daddy <laughs> would come out, go get his tractor <laughs> with his big old chain. Hook the the chain up on the tractor. Pulled the tractor in front of the car that was bogged down. Took the chain and hooked up under the car. And the person in the car would, all they had to do was just hold the wheel. <laughs> Daddy would give gas to the tractor. And then he would pull. He will pull. Sometimes it was harder than others to pull the car out of the bog, but he will pull. And, and sometimes even so, the man, the person that was driving had to match the gas to, to give some, some, some force behind the pull. You know, when you pull something, it requires a little force. Because that which you are pulling on is stuck in a place. It's stuck or uh, it is resistant to move. So I thought about this season of pulling and realizing that sometimes in our life we find ourselves bogged down. Stuck in a place. <laughs> you know, you know, sometimes we, we are stuck in a place is not by intent. You just didn't realize what you was headed into. You didn't anticipate that this was going to happen. It, it, it caught you by surprise. There are things in our lives that every now and then is going to catch you off. It's going to catch you off. It's going to catch you by surprise. Anybody know that there's in your life there are some things that will catch you by surprise and you will find yourself sometimes stuck. Nobody, nobody could, could, could predict where we were all, where we are now. When we were here last year giving thanks to God, nobody thought that Thanksgiving this year we had to be at home by ourselves with minimal family members. Nobody wrote it down, but God had on a calendar. Every now and then we are caught 
by surprise and we find ourselves stuck in the mud. But nobody wants to be stuck. Everybody wants to get out of a stuck place. They, they don't desire to reside in a stuck place. You don't want to live. You don't want to just hold out there. You want to try to get out. So when you are bogged down, you find yourself trying to move at your own power. But you can't get out by yourself. You understand? You, you, can't, you can't move by yourself. Because the more, the more you try to move, the more they spent the wheels, the, the more they're stuck, the deeper they got. Stuck in a place. When, when, when God's force of pulling connects with our desire to get unstuck. Understand what I just said. When the force of God connects, his force of pulling us connects to my desire to get out of being stuck. Things will change. That's what she was. The word of God tells us that she said, I like the word for God because when I'm, when I'm stuck sometimes, when I'm in a place where I don't desire to be, I didn't, but this is Zion, I miss you. I wish everybody could be in here and we could fill this room with people and spirits of God. I wish you could be here, but you find yourself behind the TV now. And you might even feel like, I'm stuck here. When am I going to be able to get back into the house? When am I going to be able to tell somebody to hug? When, 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 when? When, when? Tell me when. I know the questions. I've, I've heard them in my ear. When are we coming back? When, when? When, when? Pull. But I like the promises what God said in this word. He said that, but God. But God will rescue. Do you hear what I'm saying? We might be stuck for a moment, but, but God will stuck, will, will, will rescue us. But watch what he says. And he will, will unstick us from the power of the word, it says, of show. Understand what this word show represents. It doesn't mean darkness. God will rescue us from a place of darkness. Because, see, when you are stuck sometimes, you go into it blindly and you wind up finding yourself in the dark. Not knowing how I'm going to get out. Not knowing if I'm going to get out. Not knowing when I'm going to get out. Not knowing how I'm going to get out. I just find myself stuck for a moment. I don't know, but the word said, but God. Understand, understand, understand. But God will rescue from the darkness. I know that sometimes we can't always see, but we are not always supposed to see. We walk by our faith. Glory, hallelujah. And not by our sight. We are walking by faith. I know it's dark where you are. I know you want to get there. I know you want to feel God. I know you want His spirit on you. I know you do. I know. I know. It's, it's just hurting, hurting a bunch of people. I know. Because it hurt me that you ain't here right now. But God. His promises. He says certainly. The word says certainly. He will pull. He to say. My daddy. Had to go get the tractor. To pull this car. That was stuck. Notice that I said that my daddy, my father, who knew the land, who knew where the car was, 
who knew the cause shouldn't have been over there anyway, but he really didn't realize it because he didn't see it. And a lot of times, you will go where you don't see but God. But see, God had to know where you were in order to know how to get you out of it. God, God had to know. He had to know where you were located. My location was important. My daddy knew and had the person called before they came. He might have told them now, don't pull to the left or the right of the driveway because you might get bogged down. But they just showed up. My location was important. My father knew what he had to do. He realized, Deacon Watson, that he couldn't go behind the car and push because that wouldn't have done enough. You've seen it so many times where people about three or four try to push. They try to push. They try to push the car out. But the more they push and the more it spins, it still got bogged down. It wasn't until somebody had to pull. <laughs> had, to, had to pull. Had to pull. Had to pull. Daddy knew. But watch now, listen. He knew the location. But he didn't when he got on the tractor. He knew where to plant the tractor so he could pull out. He didn't pull on the grass side. He pulled on the driveway side because he knew he had traction right there. So he went on the side where it said that he would take me to safety. He knew where he could get some traction. You see, somebody pulling you out, they got to have some traction. You can't pull somebody and you slipping. You got to have some traction. And the only person that I know that can get us out of where we are, that can pull us out of this dump that we're in, is nobody but the Lord. Nobody can pull us out but God. You find yourself stuck, nobody but Jesus. You hear me? You hear me? I'm reminded. I'm reminded what he said to Joshua when he took over for Moses. And he had to take the people on to Israel. He told them, don't be afraid. Don't get discouraged. You got to know that God will be wherever you are. The person that's gone. You got in the ditch. You got in the bar. They didn't know. But God knew. Because he was with them all the time. You can't escape the presence of God. He's with you all the time. And he knows what you need when you need it. He knows when to push and he knows when to pull. No matter where you find yourself. I know he's there. He will pull me to say it. And watch now. That's a promise. The word of God said that he will pull. Understand. He will represent something that he will do. You understand? He ain't done it yet. He said that he will pull us to safety. Psalm 40 and 2. It says in the Good News Translation, it says, See, I like when his promise moves to action. He said, prove me now. Prove me. He said, I will pull. You understand? He promised me that he will pull. But when I look at this other scripture here, it said he pulled me out. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, he said, I will pull. But now in this particular scripture here, he said, he pulled me out of a dangerous pit. <laughs> pulled. He pulled. Understand, he pulled you out. And understand, when you pull, it, 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 you got to have some traction. You understand? Because this thing gets heavy sometimes. Sometimes what I'm carrying, ain't nobody can pull me but God. It depends on where my feet are. 
It depends on how deep I was in it. It depends on how long I was in it. Understand that sometimes you get in a bog and you wind up staying there for years. And you got to understand that the only way that you're going to get out is somebody got to pull you out. And understand that the Bible said that he, he promised me that he will. But then he turned around and did what he promised me. And then he pulled it. Pulled me. Anybody? And, they, and not only he pulled, not only did he pull, not only did he pull, mother, but look at what he did when he pulled. He pulled me, and then he set me safely. He set me safely. He didn't put me, he set me. There's a difference in putting me somewhere. He sat me there so I would be comfortable. And he sat me there and, and made me secure. God is pulling us through where we are. And he is going to set us. Understand this word that says he is going to set you. Not he's going to put, but he's going to set you. And when you set something, it's intentional. I set, I set this there intentionally. And I know where I set it. And the Bible says that on a rock and made me secure. So I'm telling you that where we are, I miss the people. I know God is a good God, but God is pulling us through the thing. God is pulling us, and I'm thankful because I know the God that I serve is a God that pulls me, and he sets me in a place. And why did he set me there? Psalm 91 and 14. Why did he set me right there? Why did he pull me the safety. He knew I didn't want to stay there. Even though I may have made some bad decisions along the way that got me stuck, he knew I didn't want to stay there. He knew I didn't want to be in the midst of it. He knew I'm burdened now because of it. I didn't mean to get here, God. I just wound up fine getting here. And because I know I'm here, God said, look, I've got, let's listen, listen. Oh, why are you fool? It's very simple. It's because he loves me. It's very simple. And we've heard it so many times. But understand that when God pulls you through, he loves you. He sets you up for a victory. He sets you aside for a victory. He knows that there's a victory on the way. And I need to set you aside because when it's time for the victory, I know where to go get you from. God said, set them in order. And because he loves me, he promised me in his word that he will rescue me. He'll rescue me. And then when he rescues me, and when he sits me over there, he promised that he's going to protect me. Understand, he didn't sit me there for the devils to come get up with me. He sat me there and he's going to protect me. God knows that it took me all this to get you out of where you was. You know how much it took for me to pull you out? It takes more to pull some of us through than others. My weight is heavier. My burden may be heavier, so it might take more. But when he sets me, he protects me. He protects me. You know why? For one simple thing. Because he loves me. And because I acknowledged who he was. I knew. 
that God was my refuge. And though I might have made some rough decisions in life, because I acknowledged who he was, he rescued me. And he set me aside. He protected me from harm's danger. So if God has kept you up to the day and he has brought you up to the day is because he has been pulling you through and he's preparing to send you aside so that he can protect us for what he has to come. God is pulling us through. Zion, God, you can watch. God, you can trap. God, Sandra, you hear me? God is pulling. And God knows that there's going to be some time resistance in the pool. And the resistance is just the weight that might be holding you down. He will. He promised that he would. And then he pulled. God does when you intentionally set your mind on things above. Tears of joy. Because he loves us so much that he's willing to pull and never give up until he can place us in a place of safety. So that's what I'm thankful for. Is that I got a place of safety. And the only way I can get there, God is going to have to pull me. Bow your heads. God, thank you for sending me this word pool this week. Because I recognize, God, that there's some pulling going on. I can see it. I, I can feel it. I, there are some people that are hurting. And God, you are pulling them through. They're burning in their spirit. God, but you're pulling them through. They are weak in their body. But you're pulling them through. They didn't intend to find themselves where they are. Nobody asked to be burdened. Sometimes we just find our way there. But thank God you know where we are all the time. Yes, yes. You know where we are. There's no place in the world that you don't know where your children are. And because you know where we are, 
you know how to get to it. <laughs> so God, thank you, God. <laughs> In Jesus' name, thank you.
lift your hand and say, Your, your name, name is the same. God, we now, Hallelujah. as the prayer lines are open, Hallelujah. you may desire prayer. Hallelujah. Accept Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. You are. God said that thou will confess with thy mouth and believe in thy heart that Jesus was raised from the dead, thou shalt be saved. So wherever you are, by the profession of your faith and believing in your heart, you can receive salvation unto your soul. Dial the number. Call in on the prayer line today. And we ask now, God, that as we dismiss from this place, but never your presence, yes. that you keep pulling us through. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. You're saying, somebody said, Jesus. Jesus. Just tell him, Jesus. Y'all go in peace. God is pulling us through.